right, it looks like we are recording. And today we're going to talk about scoring our art portfolios. So what I'm going to start with is showing you some pictures of the 2014 reading. And even though that seems like a long time ago, um, they still score the portfolios in the same way. So in 2014, they scored in Salt Lake City, Utah. Every few years, they change where they score the portfolios. Um, AP is owned by a company called College Board. So College Board runs several different tests, AP being one of those tests, PSAT being a different one. And every year they have 48,000 or more portfolios. So um, in 2014, they had 27,000 2D design portfolios, 17,000 drawing portfolios, and 4,000 3D design portfolios. The reason there are so many 2D design portfolios is it's a lot easier to do that category um, because it includes photography, which is a lot faster. Um, for that many portfolios, they had 130 teachers and professors act as readers, and that is the word that we use for the people who read the portfolios and give it a score. This is a picture of the room where they score the digital portion of the portfolio. So if you can see, there are lots of different computers set up all over the room and lots of people scoring those portfolios. This is an example of what it will look like on their screen. So they can look at your pictures large and they look at each one before giving you a score. The scores are given on a one to six scale. And in case I have not mentioned this earlier, the six is basically impossible to earn. Um, we'll look at some um, breakdowns of um, scores later to show you how many people get each score. Um, a one and two are failing, um, so more than likely you will not receive college credit if you score a one or two. Um, and then a three, four, and five are passing. A three means that you are performing at the expected level of a college freshman. A four means that you are performing at the expected level of a sophomore or junior in college. And then a five means that you are above level. Um, and so um, those fives are very coveted. They're hard to earn, but a three and four are wonderful scores. This portfolio received a five, and I just wanted to show you this so that you see like they can't accidentally give you the wrong score. Um, they have a confirmed screen. They also use a rubric, um, and so the rubric is attached online and shared with you in the classroom. Um, the rubric changed last year, so we are looking at the new rubric together, and we are going to talk about the key words and phrases that they're looking for when they score your portfolio. Um, this is just an example of the different people that work on it. People that work for ETS, which is a company that makes tests, also work on AP. Um, the reason you want to make your portfolio stand out is because of examples like this. So if you see that lady yawning and the lady in the front that's leaned back in her chair, these people are scoring from seven o'clock in the morning to four or five in the afternoon um, for you know, several days straight. So um, they are looking at a lot of portfolios and you don't want yours to be boring, um, especially if they look at your portfolio later in the day. Um, you wanna make sure that yours still stands out. This is an example of how they score the physical part of the portfolio. So if you are doing a 3D portfolio, you are just being scored digitally. So the images that we saw on the previous slides, if you are doing a 2D design or drawing portfolio, you will also mail in five pieces of art. Um, and when we mail in those pieces of art, they have to fit inside a portfolio. So that is why there is a size limit on your pieces. Um, the art department will be helping you mat all of your work so that they look nice and uniform, but then your portfolios are mailed to this warehouse um, 
to be scored by the AP readers. If you look right there, um, there's an example, but it looks like when people are scoring the portfolio. So you have some people, um, the people there in the orange shirts, their job is just to unpack and put out the artwork. So they do that with as much care as possible. Um, and they put stuff in the order that we've placed it in the portfolio. Then you have three people who go down the table and score your portfolio. So they walk down the pieces. And if you can imagine them spending probably 30 seconds to a minute with your artwork and then giving you a number score. So once again, you wanna make sure that your artwork stands out um, because they're not going to be spending a lot of time trying to figure out what you were trying to do. They're just gonna go off of their first impression. Um, the nice thing about the way that they score is they have two college professors and one high school teacher score your portfolios and they take an average of those three scores. They also have a process where um, the first person goes down and scores your portfolio and then they cover up their score so that the next person is not biased by the score that the first person gave you um, and then someone different actually takes an average of those three scores. This is an example of how the portfolios are stacked after they are mailed in. And our high school will have a box just like that. Um, and this is people repacking the artwork to be mailed back out. If you look at all those pieces of art, you have a lot of competition. So once again, you really wanna make sure that your art is unique and that it stands out. All right, once the portfolios are scored, they are mailed back to the students individually. So at the end of the summer, usually, or by August at the latest, you get your pieces mailed back to the address that you put on your form. And there's just more examples so that you can see the sheer number of portfolios that they score every year. So many that they rent UPS trucks to ship it all. All right, so you might be asking yourself, how do they do this in a way that is fair and consistent if you have lots of different people scoring portfolios and they're not um, computers with algorithms? They have a rigorous standard setting session before um, each of the portfolios are scored. And so they have someone who is an expert in that portfolio teach everyone else how to score using the rubric. And they do it nine times for each portfolio and they review the poster or the um, official handout that I will share with you all when we receive it. Um, they review the rubric together. They practice scoring portfolios just like we will do in class. And then they review their scores and then they debate and discuss to reach a consensus. So we will do that same type of process in the classroom each week. When they are reviewing the official guide, they usually share examples um, because of what happened in 2014 and in 2015, they no longer print pictures on the official guide. So it will just be the text with a stock image on the front. Um, but it is because of that white ceramic piece right there in that year um, was actually a copyrighted image from another artist and they sued over it. Um, and then um, the same thing happened the following year with a different piece of art. So plagiarism does happen, but you will get caught, so don't do it. All right, the next thing that they do is they review the rubric, look at them reviewing the rubric together, scoring portfolios together, and reviewing their scores. Then the de they debate and discuss what scores they gave it to reach a consensus. So you have those experts kind of teaching all the other professors and teachers how to score the portfolios in the same way. All right, so um, here is a breakdown of the scores for 2014, and I will actually um, share with you the breakdown of scores from 2019. They have not shared um, the scores from 2020 um, overall yet, so um, we're going to look at 2019 as well. But just to give you an idea, out of 16,905 drawing portfolios, only 13 of those portfolios received a perfect score of six. So when I say that is the unachievable unicorn score, I'm not joking. 
Um, so only 16% of those portfolios received a five. So even a five is very hard to get, um, but it is encouraging to look at how few students received a one, only 3.5% of the students. So if you are in um, AP classes, know that I saw potential in you and I put you in that class or allowed you to take that class because I felt like you could pass the portfolio. Um, then if you look about the same amount of students made a two and a four, about 20%. And then most students made that three. 40% of the students. So that is an encouraging score. All right, same thing for 2D design. If you look, out of 26,758 portfolios, only one made the perfect score of a six. So we're not shooting for a six, we're shooting for a five. A five is hard to achieve though. If you look, only 13% of the students, or 13.9, so almost 14% of the students made a five in 2014. And I will tell you that I feel like they have gotten slightly harsher in the last couple years. So um, it is a little bit harder to make those good scores. Once again though, most students, 35% of the students who took this exam, made a three, which is passing. So that is a good score. If you look on all of these, the scores um, skew high. So you have more students making it five than you have making a one. You have more students making a four than you have making a two. So that is encouraging. That is good news. You also have for 3D design, out of 4,241 portfolios, only four students made a perfect score of a six. If you make a six, you might as well be a professional artist. Like, why are you even still in high school? And if you look here, once again, you have most students scoring at that three. You've got 36.8% of your students. Now, I do personally believe that 3D design is the hardest portfolio to pass. And the scores right here kind of confirm that because if you look, this one skews lower between the two and the four. So you have 27.7% of students making a two and only 19.7% of students making a four. All right, so how can they be objective? Well, we're gonna practice a little bit and look at some things to kind of help you feel a little bit more confident in how objective the scores are. So they do several things to make sure that they are accurate and um, have perspective because sometimes as a teacher and as a reader, you might get tunnel vision. So what they do is they have statistics and they post it um, every so many hours and at the end of the day um, so that you can see if you're scoring higher than everybody else or if you're scoring lower than everybody else or if you're not scoring enough portfolios, like if you're going too slow. Um, so they have these different um, stats posted to help the readers kind of gauge themselves. They also, um, let me go back one, if there is a discrepancy, so if someone gives someone a two and then someone else gives someone a five, those are very different scores. So if there is a score like that, they will actually submit your portfolio to someone called a table leader. And that leader who has more experience, so even more experience than these people, um, will decide which score is accurate and probably talk to those um, readers or people who are scoring portfolios to see why they got such different scores um, and to kind of help correct them so that there's not anything that different. So what might happen is you might have one professor give you a three and another professor give you a four. And so that way that third person, whether they give you a three or a four, kind of determines whether you get a three or four. But um, the average should be very close. So you should be at a 3.5 or you should be at a um, you know, solid three or a solid four or a solid five. Um, and so be confident that your scores are not random. Um, they do a lot of different things to make sure that they score you fairly. All right, another thing is they use the rubric, which we will go through and we will look at the different words that they are using in the rubric. And that is the words that the scores have drilled into their heads. So I will drill it into your heads as well. Um, and we will practice scoring portfolios all year. All right, so we're gonna practice a little bit right now. Now keep in mind that when they score your portfolios, they're not scoring just one piece of art. They're scoring your 
whole body of work um, as one unit. So they're going to look at everything. So you might have one thing in your portfolio that's a two, and you might have one thing in your portfolio that's a five. They're going to take an average of all the different pieces and give you an overall score. Um, they don't have time to sit there and give each individual piece of score. So you want to make a good impression overall. So we actually use that to our advantage a little bit in the order that we put your images in and the type of images that we use. All right, so let's get back to the slide. If you look at this slide, this is a sculpture. It's non-representational. And what score would you give this sculpture on a score of one, or on a scale of one to five? Did you give it a five? Because that's what it's got. All right, for this next one, look at this sculpture right here. What would you give this sculpture? If the last one was a five, what would this one be? Did you give it a four? Because that is what it got. All right, this last sculpture right here, or it's not the last sculpture, but this sculpture right here. Um, what score do you think this one is? If the last one was a four and the one before that was a five, what would this one be? Hopefully you gave it a six because it is better than the last two. And this one to me looks like professional level artwork. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, what do bad pieces look like? This one right here, it got a two. Now, I, like I was saying earlier, I think they're a little bit harsher now. I don't think that this would still make a two. I think it would make a one if it was submitted this year. All right, so here is a couple more. Remember, they're evaluating your whole body of work. So these two pieces, um, one is a four and one is a five. If you have another piece that is a four, it's going to make your overall portfolio a four. If you have another piece that is a five, it's going to make your overall portfolio a five. Um, and depending on which type of portfolio you are doing, um, you will submit a different amount of pieces of art. All right, these two pieces right here, this one is a three and this one is a one. So the average would be a two. Um, that piece on the right, why is that even being submitted? Um, it looks like trash. All right, so here's an example of a concentration and then we'll talk about the score that it got very briefly and then we'll get into drawing. All right, so this one right here is found objects made into wearable pieces of adornment and jewelry. Some of these are detail shots, and that is something you have an option of doing. All right, so this concentration got a four overall, because overall it is very creative. It looks like much better artwork than, say, a senior in high school or freshman in college would make. Um, so this student obviously has a good understanding of the 3D design scoring rubric. All right, let's get into drawing. So um, things that they're gonna be looking for are things like composition, your concept, and then how you execute it. And I will tell you that one of the things that they are really looking for in drawing is your skill. So make sure that you choose a medium that you are skilled in. Um, pick something that you can do really good drawings in. Don't pick something that you're not confident using. This piece made a six. So if you look at it, it has a good understanding of composition. It has excellent um, execution. And um, you have to kind of like ask yourself, you know, is that digitally edited? Is that just made from colored pencil? How exactly did the student do this? So they kind of defied the medium. They're so good at using colored pencil that you almost can't tell that's what they used. All right, this is another one where this student has technical competence and skill with drawing materials. So if you look at this piece right here, what score do you think this one got? If the last one was a six, this one is also a six. So very different. This one, it doesn't have a lot of color to it. Um, but once again, the student really, really knew how to use the medium. All right, this piece right here, if the last two were sixes, um, this one is original and has imagination and invention. What score do you think this one would get? 
This one also got a six. So I want to show you what really, really good artwork looks like. They're all three very different. This one is more imaginative and more like an illustration. But once again, it is very strong and they had a good use of medium. And if you look, all three of these images are very strong on the principles of design. So when I talk about principles of design, do not tune me out and think I'm just talking about the 2D design portfolio. It applies to drawing as well. All right, this is a 2D design portfolio. A few of you might be doing that one. So if you look at this one, they had de good decision making and intention and in the compositional use of the elements and principles of design. What score do you think this one got? Oh, good guess. It also got a six. These are sixes as well. So don't worry, I will be showing you other portfolio examples for drawing that are not just sixes, but I feel like we're exposed to so much drawing that I really wanted to show you what a good drawing portfolio looks like. All right, keep in mind that you can also include graphic design, digital imaging, photography, collage, fabric design, weaving, fashion design, illustration, painting and printmaking in the 2D design portfolio. So just like we looked at last week, you need to be thinking about what your strengths are and whether you want to be doing a drawing portfolio if you're in drawing, or if you wanna be doing a 2D design portfolio if you're in drawing. You can choose either one, they're very similar. It just kind of depends on what your strengths are. All right, thank you very much.